Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. I, I love the fact that we are celebrating Father's Day, uh, but also the fact that, that God, God desires that every single father have a spiritual makeover. It is God's desire that we put on the new nature as fathers, that we put on the new person as fathers. God said, behold, I'm doing a new thing in you, right? We are his new creation. And if you, if you understand Father's Day, it is, it is a fact that Father's Day is the least celebrated holiday of all holidays in the United States of America. And there's a reason for that. And the reason is because, you know what, there has been such a dysfunction when it comes to manhood. And because there hasn't been the greatest model, role models in our life as men, we begin to take on the nature of a dysfunctional society. And society starts labeling you with all kinds of things, dads, and even young men who are not fathers yet. And, and so there's labels and labels and labels. And, and so, you know what, we have all these clothing racks. And, and here's the reality. You know what, there's, there's, there's labels that people will always tell you. You can't control the labels that people give you, but you can remove them. And that's the beauty with God, that you have, you have the, the potential. You have the power to change the labels that have been given to us men and fathers in this society so that we can become all that God has called us to be. And so every single day, let me tell you something, all of us, men, women, we, we've all been labeled something. Some of us are still living up to the label that was given to you from childhood. You haven't been able to change. You know, in James, the Bible says, resist the devil and he'll flee from you. But isn't it so true that we resist God more than we do the devil? And then we wonder, why am I not changing? Why me as a father? Why, why am I not being God's man? Why, why am I not raising, raising myself up? Why am I not rising up to the man that God wants me to be? Here's why. It's very simple. Don't play the victim, but here's the reality. Here's the truth. The truth is that so many of us men, including myself being one of them, from a very young age, I was labeled as never amount to anything, loser, gum under a shoe, Worthless. I mean, I can say some other names, but I'd have to cuss in church. And so many fathers today, you came from a pedigree that, that maybe wasn't the greatest. Listen, even if you were raised, Dad, in an awesome home with a great dad, with a great model, I believe that regardless of how you were raised, that you should be a better version of that. Because there's this true statement that the world says, like, like mother, like what? Work with me. Like father, like? Son. Okay, so whether it was a dysfunctional family or whether it was a functional family that loved God, you and I should be a better version of our family. My kids, I tell them, you know what, Isaac? Uh, you know, that's why I love to ask my son to do a spoken word for me on behalf of me for Father's Day. And, and I said, listen, I want you to be a better version than me. You know I love God. You know I'll do anything for God. You know I, I'm a man of faith, but I want, you, I want you to be better than me. It should be every father's desire that our children go further, but it should be your desire that you go further than your own family. And so you can't control the labels people have given you, but you can remove them. That is a choice that you have to make. For example, let me just give you some practical things. You know, there's this guy that hardly anybody knows, uh, Albert Einstein. <laughs> Albert Einstein's teacher grabbed his father and said, hey, listen, no matter what your son does, he'll never be successful. Let's take another person. Uh, you know, there's this other guy who, you know, it, he's not that big, but, I mean, people have heard of him, Walt Disney. His teacher said, you're not creative enough, and you don't have enough imagination. You know what? How about um, uh, Lucille Ball? You know what they said about Lucille Ball? They said, you know what? 
She doesn't have the quality of a successful actress. However, she started I Love Lucy and blew it up. You guys know that show? Uh, this is one of my favorites. And this is uh, with uh, uh, Winston Churchill. When, when he was in sixth grade, uh, the teacher said, you know what? You're not smart enough. However, one of the most infamous quotes of, of, of Winston Churchill was, never give up, never surrender. Never, 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 never. And so many of us have, have surrendered to the labels that have been given to us, to the labels that have been passed down to us for so long. Some of us, really, we live up to it. For example, you know what? I, I, I have my grandpa, okay, on my father's side. He was an angry man. My father was an angry man. You know what I became? A very angry man. As a matter of fact, you know what? If you're not careful, you start taking on the labels of your generation. And guess what? I, I was so angry that eventually I got in gangs when I was a kid. And my nickname on the street was Temper because I was full of anger and rage. And I was labeled that way. Without even, without even wanting to be this person, I became it regardless. Why? Because it was the environment I grew up in. The environment that you're in right now is... is, is producing the person that you are right now and so as fathers you know what I'm not here to bring fathers down actually my message today I was telling uh, my wife I'm like you know what I don't want to bring the typical father's day message I want to inspire dads today I don't want to tell dads what they're not doing I want to tell them who they are you're awesome you're fearfully and wonderfully made you're powerful, man. You're anointed. You're called by God. You were predestined by God. And for all the young men that are not fathers, let me tell you something. The potential inside of you is greatness. What God is wanting to do and desires to do in the inside of you is to give you a label, to give you a nature, to give you a wardrobe, amen. God wants to give his people a makeover, not just for fathers, but for men and women. God is always wanting to do a makeover in people's life. Maybe you're here today and you're not the greatest dad. Well, guess what? Then get a spiritual makeover. Maybe you're not the greatest mom. You're not the greatest family. You're not the greatest whatever. Then you know what? Then get a makeover in God. Because it all starts with faith. The only we reason I was able to bring transformation into my life from a dysfunctional family is because I chose to, to, to dare to believe God for a transformation in my life. We all have a choice. That is the wonderful gift that God gives us. Now, uh, you know, when I, when I did this makeover with these guys, I'm telling you, it was resistant. They're like, well, you know, I don't like this. I'm like, I, don't, I didn't ask you what you don't like. <laughs> Your wife sent you to me. You're mine. <laughs> you will wear what I tell you to wear. And you're going to be happy about it. And they all look sharp, don't they? Yes. By the way, I'm going to be doing a, uh, uh, you'll see it soon. If you follow, follow me on Instagram or Facebook, I'm going to be putting a little ad. I'm going to meet a bunch of guys. If you guys want a makeover, we're going to do it again with a whole bunch of people. So uh, wives, send your uh, husbands to me. We'll, we'll hook them up. <laughs> It'll be awesome. We'll get them in skinny jeans. It'll be awesome. <laughs> they look all fine. I know. I always hear the men, no way, I'll never do that. Never say never. <laughs> but here's the sad thing. The sad thing is that if we keep wearing the label, if we keep wearing the threads, if you keep putting on that old person that people said you were or that person that they said you would become, if you're not careful, you will begin to have the thread of that label in the way you think, and then you'll never change. That's why we've been talking about our message, thinkers. So as a man thinks in his heart, so what? So is he. Listen, why, why, why were you trying to be cute, Pastor, about who you're wearing? Listen, what you wear doesn't, it doesn't make you, but it does introduce who you are. When you put on Christ, it introduces you who you belong to. Every single one of us are wearing something. Today, some of us are either wearing disappointment. 
huh? We're wearing frustration. We're wearing, you know, lack of faith. We're wearing negativity. Or today you came in and you're wearing victory. And you're, you're wearing breakthrough. And you're, you're wearing faith. And you're wearing miracles. You're, you're wearing things that God has given you. He said, put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Every day you and I get to choose what we wear. The enemy is an equal opportunity. He is also giving you and I makeovers as well. You can be wear, dressing up all fly and everything, but let me tell you something. The enemy always wants to jack up your wardrobe. I pray that as fathers we progress. I pray as fathers that we continue to increase that we continue to look at the, 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 the mandate that God has given us as fathers, as sons, and that we would be everything that God would desire us to be. Because let me tell you something, God has amazing things. Here's the reality. People do not determine your destiny. God does. It doesn't matter what people said about you. It doesn't matter what they said you would become. Or what they said that you would be or do. What matters is what did God say about you. That's why it's so important as men. We have to have this intimate personal relationship with God. Because if you don't know God on a personal level. You'll never know who, you've, who you were created to become. God said you're the apple of my eye. And no one can touch you. But so many times we give the enemy. We give him more surrender and say, yeah, fine, this is who I am. And we just live this way. You're not too old to change. Some of us fathers, we're already in our 40s, 50s, 60s. And, and, and you know, we're disappointed. We're, we're carrying, you know, what, uh, uh, condemnation and, and shame and guilt. Take it off. Because God doesn't give any man or any woman shame, guilt, condemnation. Only Satan gives you that wardrobe. God gives you grace. God gives you mercy. God gives you forgiveness. God gives you a second chance, a third chance. But he's saying, come on, start putting on my wardrobe. God loves you. He wants something so much better for you and me. And then he wants you to go ahead and do the catwalk. He does. Say it's time for change. It is. It's time for us to become everything God calls us to be. But it's also time to remove the label that's been given to us. It takes faith. You know what? <laughs> people, people may call you a nerd, a geek, you know, a, a bookworm. They call you all that junk. Listen, it's never too late to become that person. But one day they'll call you boss. Call me what you want, but I'm becoming God's man. I'm becoming something greater. There's potential in every single one of us dads. There's potential to be greater. There's potential to be so much, so much more than what you think you are right now. Maybe right now you're, you're a good dad. Well, you can become gooder. Maybe you're the best dad. Well, you can become the bestest. Maybe you're an awesome dad. Well, guess what? You can become awesomeness. It's never too late. So many of us have been labeled too small, too short, too dumb, not talented enough, not gifted enough. Too many men have been labeled as, you know what, men don't know how to have a real intimate relationship with God. You know, we need to cancel that label. No, we're God's creation. We're God's royal priesthood. We have to change the label, men, I'm talking to you today. Change the label. Get rid of it. Allow God to do a makeover in your life. But you have to give him permission. These men that went with me, yes, yeah, though their wives are the ones that said, yes, do it. I, they still had to get their husband's permission. And without that permission, we wouldn't have been able to make that transformation or that change in their life. You got to give God permission to allow the Holy Spirit to start changing your lives for you to become God's man the way he created you to be. Right now, listen, you're either imitation or you're an OG. And every man, God created for you to be an OG. God doesn't make copycats. God makes originals. And he makes you unique. And so as men, we have to remember that, listen, 
God has more for you. It's not, it's not enough. You shouldn't be okay with where you're at. You should always be wanting to go further. Now let me talk to the ladies. Ladies, you got to think also like Rahab. Man, Rahab was what? What did she do? She's a prostitute. Man, she made many mistakes in her life. But let me tell you what Rahab did. At some point in her life, she got tired of being labeled as the woman to go do your thing with. She got tired of being labeled as someone who was easy. She got tired of being labeled as someone who was dumb, insignificant, worth nothing, devalued. And she finally said, God, she prayed a bowl. She dared. She dared God. She believed God and said, God, if you can just do something with my life, if you can just take my life and use it for something amazing. You know what Rahab ended up doing? She ended up becoming Israel's deliverance. You can change you can change, ladies. You can change. Dads, we can change. We can become what God has called us to be, but we also have to make an, uh, we have to, we have to make a, 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 an intentional decision to say, I am ready. I need to be bold. I need to have this, this desire on the inside where I dare God to use my life for something more than what I'm doing right now. What you're doing right now is okay, but you can do so much greater right now. I promise you. Labels are important. We use labels every day. Every day, some of you, you, you buy different labels. You know, your, your food is labeled. Your clothing is labeled. Your car is labeled. Your home community is labeled. Everybody's labeled. We live in a society of labels. Why are labels uh, so important to us? Well, let me give you three reasons. Number one, look at this. Labels. Why do we use them? Well, it's, it identifies it identifies the make, it identifies the brand name and, and the credentials, they reveal the quality of the object, huh? The name on the tag defines its value, right? Do you guys remember Pro Wings? Anybody remember my time Pro Wings? Dang, you did not want to go to school with Pro Wings. You wanted to be wearing Fila's, British Knights, Nikes, Adidas. Oh, no, LA Gear was no, that was not cool. Don't, I don't want to tell you what we used to think about LA gear. <laughs> yeah, no, you wanted to wear like the stuff, Converse. That was, you probably get jumped in school in my time. Number two, look at this. Labels, they're information about the product. Huh? Come on, I want, I want people that when, when, when they say CJ, man, I want people to say, man, when you hang out with CJ, that dude is smart, intelligent, hardworking, runs circles around anybody. You know, I want them, when, when I hear Fabi, when, they, when you hear the name Fabi, they, they, they hear faithful woman, godly. Man, she, she, she will have your back. She's loyal. She's consistent. Man, she will serve anyone. And she is not afraid to step up and to stand out for God. Okay, so it's, it's what it's made of. What are you made of, man? What are you made of? Are you made up of fear? Or are you made of, of courage? What are you made of? Every single one of us, we're made up of something right now. But, but what are you made up of? Complaints or solutions? Fear or faith? What are you made of? It's so important for us to know what we're made of. If you don't know what you're made of, then you are going to be labeled by someone else. Okay? Where it was made, it is, is it, if it's natural, if it's man-made, or if it's divine. And let me tell you something. Every single one of you in this room, you are divine from heaven. Number three, another reason for labels, instruction. It brings instruction. A tag, it's a marker. It's something that gives instruction about the object. Warnings, directions for everyday use. It's care labels. Listen, every single one of you right now, whether you like it or not, someone has work, there's a label on you. Right now, dads, your kids, they have a label for you. It was funny, when I was doing this whole makeover, I had three youth. They were volunteering, which, by the way, if you have a youth and you would like to see them enter in here, come talk to our office. But they were in there, and uh, they're all talking. Like, what are you doing, Pastor Mike? Oh, I'm doing some makeovers. And uh, one of them were like, yeah, my dad's getting them one of the makeovers. You know, I'm like, oh, cool. I'm like, well, I'm like, uh, we're going to change. He's like, yeah, you need to change him because, man, he needs change. <laughs> this is a youth telling, saying, saying about the dad. I'm like, okay, great. We're going we're gonna to change. It's going to be awesome. I'm, I'm like, well, what do you think? What do you think he looks like right now? She's like, like a dad. 
I'm like, dang. She said that in a very negative way. So if your kids think that you look like a dad, change it quickly, man. Your wardrobe. And, uh, and I'm like, man, I'm afraid to even ask you what you think I am. And uh, she's like, you got style. I'm like, yeah, all right, cool. I love it. <laughs> you have us a smart one, girl, smart one. But check this out. Listen, Matthew 16, this is awesome. Here's Jesus. Jesus being the son of God. Jesus doing great miracles. Jesus, man, he's, he's doing everything the father asked him to do. And, and then he gets with his disciples. And, and he's interested in wanting to know, what do people think? What, what do they say about me? Look what he says in, in Matthew 16, 13 and 14. It says, and then Jesus went to the area of Philippi. It says, and there he asked his disciples, hey, who do people say the son of man is? Who do people label me to be? And they said, uh, some say that you're John the Baptist, and others say that you're Elijah, while still others say that you're Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But isn't it amazing how nobody said he is the son of God? Listen, don't trip when people can accept who you are in Jesus. For example, Jesus goes back to his town. He goes back to his town called Nazareth. And if you remember, Nazareth is like New Hall. You say, have you ever noticed, like, like when you say, uh, yeah, I live in Santa Cruz Valley, everyone knows Stevenson Ranch, Valencia, Canyon Country, Saugus, but they never talk about New Hall. <laughs> it's like New Hall. Anytime I talk with them, I always say to people, they're like, where's your church? I say, Santa Cruz. Oh, yeah, whereabouts in Santa Cruz? I'm like, New Hall. They're like, what's that? I've had people that attend this church right now that said, Pastor, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to keep it real. They said, I've been, I've been wanting to come to your church for over a year, two years, but I heard it was a new hall. <laughs> I don't know if that was a compliment or. <laughs> well, that's what they used to say about Nazareth. People would say, can anything good come out of Nazareth? You see, don't trip when your family, when your closest friends, you see, when you have close friends, the temptation that you and I will always have is that we know your junk so well that it's hard for us to see the real you that God has created in you. Jesus goes back to his town, and what did they say? They said, hey, they didn't say, hey, look, listen, they heard all the miracles he was doing, and you know what? They didn't have the audacity to accept the fact that he was the son of God. They didn't have the audacity to validate that. Man, this guy does You would think they would want to have a parade that Jesus is in town, that something awesome came out of Nazareth. But you know what they said? They said, hey, isn't that Joseph's kid? Huh? Isn't that Joseph's kid, the carpenter's son? And then that, that little, you know, brat that was used to walk around, going to church, reading the Bible to the people. And isn't that that? They couldn't accept that he was the son of God. And so many times, you know what so many of us here, you live to get the validation of your mom, your dad, your family, your friends, your work. No one said you have to be validated by anyone. God validated you, and that's all that matters. But so many times people are just trying to get validation now, especially in this culture, social media. Unless you have X amount of likes, you have no value. Now you want to grade. Everybody wants to be graded now. You want to be yelped. You want to be liked. You want to be everything. And God's like, why are you living this way? And so that's why Jesus said, hey, listen, in that town, I cannot do many great works. It's not that he couldn't do it. It's that they wouldn't let him. You have to accept that when God changes your life, Man, that you value the change that he made inside of you and that you stop trying to get the approval of your family. Stop trying to get the approval of your friends. You are who you are in Christ Jesus, period. Stop it. If not, you're never going to rise up. You're always going to live in the shadow of somebody. That needs to change. And I know that sometimes, listen, men, let's talk to men. Most men are, are, are so jacked up in their identity because, you know what, they, they have daddy issues. And as men, you know what, though we're all macho and we're strong, we crave love too. But you have a heavenly father who loves you, 
who cares about you, who has a plan for you. And we just have to start learning how to accept that the Father has already valued you. He predestined you. He called you out of darkness into his marvelous light to be someone special and unique for him. We don't have to keep living the way our pedigree, our ancestors, our family live. We can, we can start something new. We can cause a revolution. We can change our generation for generations. We can be the change where later on someone said, you know what, uh, great grandpa Mauricio is the one who changed our whole generation. And now the Ruiz family, we're blowing it up for Jesus everywhere we go. Come on, that's what people should say about your family. I mean, we're already accepting labels. You might as well accept the right ones. Might as well. And so it, it, it shocks me because so many times I keep seeing men. And it, and it hurts because I see men so many times, and, and they're not changing, man. It's just like, come on, bro. What's, what's up? I, I, I'm no one special, guys. I, let me just talk to you, Father. I'm no one special. I, I'm just a man like you who loves God and has chosen to receive the, the word of God and has chosen to pursue God and, and love him and pray. I wasn't born pastor. I was, I was born a man just like you, but now I'm a man with a call of God, a man with purpose, a man who knows who has a divine destiny. That's the only difference between me and a lot of men. We all have to come back to the conclusion that it's not about religion. It's about a relationship with your Lord and Savior, and when you're in him, you discover who you really are. You no longer go for the imitation. You go for the real deal. And God wants you to be real. Let's take the apostle Paul. Paul, Paul was, Paul had, he had the wrong image. He had the wrong label. I mean, he was labeled as a murderer, a terrorist. He was someone who was a hater. Let me just talk to you about haters. Listen, haters hate you. You know why? Because they're insecure about you. That's the only reason. The only reason people have haters is because those haters, they know there's something in you that they are jealous of. So the haters are going to hate. Look at Paul, Galatians 2.20. Are you getting something? Yes. He says, I've been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live. See, that's the place we need to come as fathers. He says, I'm crucified with Christ. In other words, I have died the same death as Jesus Christ. He says, I, I, I'm no longer wearing the old label. I'm no longer that old person. I, I, I'm, wearing, I'm wearing something new. He says, look, I no longer live, but Christ lives what? In me, he says, and the life I now live in the body, I live by what? Faith. I live it by what? Faith. I live it by what? Faith. So if you want to change your label, you're going to have to apply faith. I have to put my faith in the label. See, right now, everyone has these labels that you hear that are pretty awesome, like Gucci has the house of Gucci. Huh? What are some other expensive labels? Come on, talk to me. Huh? Prada. The house of Prada. That's what they're called. What else? Nike. Nike. The house of Nike. Yes. Tom Forrest. Tom Forrest the Tom house. Ford. Tom, Ford. Tom Ford. The house of Tom Ford. These are all. Listen. We have the house of God. And, and in the house of God, there is no fake. It's all real. It's authentic. It's organic. And so we got to come back to this. That's what Paul said. He goes to church and says, hey. I know y'all know I used to be a killer, terrorist, and all that stuff, but guess what? It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. See, I took off the old rags, and now I put on the Lord Jesus Christ, and I'm a different man. I have changed. And look at this. He says, who loved me and gave himself for me. When you as a man finally know that God the Father loves you, then true change can begin to happen in your life. But when you don't understand that you're loved as a man, let me tell you something. You keep acting the way you act. There's not change. Why? Because only love can cast out all fear. Only love can begin to compel you to change. When you don't experience love, you don't change for nothing. Why? Love makes you want to change for somebody. It, it makes you want to do things that are unusual. It's like when you first fell in love. You know what? You, you would have butterflies throughout the day. You would, you would do new th anything for them. I mean, you'd even smell good all the time. And then after you got them, you stopped taking showers and, you know, whatever. <laughs> but isn't that the truth? And so Paul's like, hey, listen, uh, 
I died of my old self. He, he, he said, uh, when I died with Christ, all the labels died along with me. Uh, and I put on a new nature. And, and so we understand that Paul was, 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 was someone that was self-righteous. And he was a fool. And, and, and he was someone that, that, that had all kinds of issues. But let me tell you something. But when you truly, as a man, give your life to Christ, he pins all those things on the cross that you and I dealt with. He pins it. He gets rid of it. So there's something about that. And so now Paul, he says, now I only have one label. And he says, it's Christ in me. I have one label. It's Christ in me. Remove the label. Say it with me. Remove the label. Remove the label. Listen, you got to remove the label of insignificance in order for you to take on the label of significance because you're significant to God. A few more minutes. We're almost out of here. So, you guys remember Bethlehem? Bethlehem was, <laughs> was a place that, that nobody talked about. Uh, once again, going back, New Hall. <laughs> There's been so many negative views of New Hall. You know what? Many of you, you're here and you're just like, wow, it's so amazing. I feel the presence of God. It's so cool. It's, yeah, but y'all didn't get here when I got here. It was jacked up, messed up. Every time I got here, I was oppressed, depressed. Man, the warfare was heavy up in this place. I mean, the streets did not look the way. There were dirt streets. It was nasty. It was filled with drugs, gangs, violence, prostitution. We had prostitution on Main Street prostitution okay so when we got here it was a challenge but let me tell you something we hit it hard with prayer and not just prayer man we started walking the streets we started talking to people we started loving on people people were giving their life to Christ people were changing there was transformation and let me tell you something when people talked about New Hall they said man it's a bad place to live in it's a dangerous place to live in but one of the things on our vision if you Read our vision. If you go to Elevate Life Track, you'll realize that one of the things is that we said that we would be prominent in the city of New Hall, that we would change New Hall for the glory of God, that New Hall would be a place that it will be heard throughout this entire valley. And guess what? Now, today, New Hall is the most popular place to be. So what, what came out of New Hall is going to be great marriages. It's going to be great men, great fathers, great mothers, great businesses. Man, there's going to be some great people coming out of Elevate Church in the city of New Hall. We're going to change our city. We're going to change more communities. It is something that you have to accept. But it had, listen, it started with one person believing to change the label. We change it. That is something that we can remove. We remove the label of, 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 of just people seeing us. That's what Bethlehem was like. And so all the prophets, you know, with Joshua, he was prophesying. He would mention all these great cities. But you know what? In the Bible, if you read it, they would always leave Bethlehem out. You know why? Because it was a low-life place, man. Losers came out of Bethlehem. Man, nobody wanted to talk about Bethlehem, so they left it. But then there was another prophet who came up, and he says, oh, no, this is going to stop. <laughs> and he came, and he started prophesying, and his name is Micah. Go with me to Micah real quick on the scripture here. Quickly, guys. Look at Mike 5, 2 says this. <laughs> this is Micah. He says, but you, and he was talking to all the haters. You. They were talking smack about New Hall. You know, it's amazing how many people will go to a church, but they'll talk crap about their own church. It's like your family. I love my family, but how do you curse or spit on the ones you say you love? But you, Bethlehem, but you, Elevate Church, you, all of you, <laughs> though you are small, among the clans of Judah. Out of you. Say with me, out of me. Out of me. No, no, do like I did. Out of, me. out of me. Out of me. No, say like you mean it. Out of me. Out of me. Some of us don't even believe that. We're just repeating me. No, say out of me. Out of me. No, have a crazy face. Out of me. Out of me. <laughs> Sometimes you got to look a little cray cray. Just for people to get, get their attention like. Yeah, oh, yeah, out of you. So yeah, something's come out of you. <laughs> and it's ugly. <laughs> out of you will come for me. Out of you will come for me. God's saying, listen, out of you, you will come for me. Out of you will come for me, one who will be ruler over Israel. 
Let me tell you something. God out of you wants to do something great on this earth. God out of you wants to do something great in your community, in your family, at your job. God out of you. But at what point will you begin to accept and believe that out of you something amazing is going to happen? Out of Bethlehem, Micah said this. He said, you know what? There will be a king that will rise out of, out of, out of Bethlehem. And we understand, where was David from? Bethlehem. Where was Jesus from? Bethlehem. Bethlehem. Out of New Hall, great things are going to come out. Churches will be birthed. Missionaries will be sent. Out of Elevate Church, business owners will be blessed. Families will be restoring other families. Out of a small place in Santa Clarita will be a city, will be a people that will rise up and will do something great for him. But when will you accept it and receive it? It starts with you. Without you, God can't change. You got to show up and then God can do what he wants to do. If the guys didn't show up at the mall, if they would have flaked on me, they would have never got their transformation. We constantly don't show up. It's time to show up so that God can show off. Not show off to be private, but to show you off and display you and say, yeah, my son was jacked up. My daughter was full of mistakes. But guess what? Look at them now. That's what God wants to do. David is a perfect example out of Bethlehem. Think about it. His own father devalued him. His father, he loved his other kids, but they, they didn't like David. His brothers didn't like David. He was a bastard child. And then Samuel the prophet shows up into David's house. And he begins to talk to the dad and says, hey, God has sent me to this house to anoint one of your sons to be king. And, and then, and then so, you know, uh, you, you have... Dad's all excited, brings all his kids, and, and Samuel starts looking at each one of them, and he says, wow, this, this, dude, this one's got to be it, man. He's buff. Woo. All right. Then, then he comes to the next one. He says, oh, woo, man, that hair. Oh, you knew right away. Right away. He, he gave me his hair right away. He knew it. He knew what I was coming for. Man, he looks fly with that hairstyle, Right? And he just kept going to man after man, every man. And he said, man, this one's good looking. His physique, man, his look is just like, wow. And he's like, it's got to be this one. And God kept telling Samuel, no, 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 no. And then Samuel's like, okay. He finished all the kids and he looked at his dad and he said, hey, listen, are you sure there ain't any more kids? Let me tell you something. Though people have forgotten about you, God hasn't. And his father says, yeah, well, I do have one more. And so the way they saw David was he was scrawny, he was little, too small, insignificant. And they said, yeah, we have him tending our sheep, man. What do you want from him? He's, you definitely don't want to see him. And Sam was like, oh, no, I, I need to see him. And he made them wait. And he says, go get him real quick. And that took hours to go get David because he was out in the field. David shows up with little red freckles, all tiny, small, <laughs> you know, all looking kind of, you know, because he was a little goofy kid. And he's like, yeah, yeah, how can I help you, Dad? What, what's up? He's like, yeah, this guy wants to talk to you. And then Samuel, he looks at him. And then look at what God says. Put my scripture up, please. Look at what God says. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not consider how handsome or tall he is. He was talking about all those guys. He says, for I have not chosen him. Each one, I have not chosen him. I have not chosen. He said, the Lord does not look at the things people look at. Aren't you glad that God doesn't even care about what you look at when you see yourself in the mirror? Aren't you glad that every time you say to yourself, I am so stupid, I'm so dumb. Thank God that God does not agree with you or me. Thank God. Help us, Jesus. He says, I don't look at the outside. Look at this, at the things people look at. He says, people look at the outside of a person, but the Lord looks at what's in the heart. You see, God already knows what's in your heart right now. God knows what's in your heart. Listen, there are so many people in churches that have degrees. Men that come from a pedigree of great stuff. Men that are filthy rich. But I've noticed that God has not chosen many of those kind of people. Why? Because he can't use them? No. Because they think they've arrived. 
So God does this all the time. He says, I choose the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. Does that mean that he can't use someone that's wealthy? No. He's looking for the right heart, not the right look, not the right degree, (laughs) not the right pedigree. He's just looking for a heart after God's own heart. That's what he's looking for. And so check this out. So Samuel anoints David to be king. And the brothers are right there hating, watching like, man, look at that. Think about it. Everybody saw him be king. Now watch this. So now they're at the battlefield of Goliath. David shows up. He's already anointed king. But the brothers, they couldn't accept the anointing on David. And so the brothers immediately said, what are you doing here, man? Why aren't you tending the little bit of sheep that that my dad gave you to take care of? See, they kept labeling him, you're no good. You'll never amount to anything. Why are you here with us? We're men. You're not. You're a child. Get the heck out of here. But you know what David did? He said, no, sorry, bro. (laughs) Guess what? Your labels I have taken off. And I have put on the new label that God has given me. And God has given me the label of a giant killer. God has given me the label of, of more than a conqueror. God has given me the label of king. And I am here because God has labeled me righteous. And see that Goliath? He's coming down. He will no longer mess with the people of Israel. Let me tell you something. On that day, David chose to remove the labels of what his family thought of him. Stop accepting The label that was given to you. And start putting on the new label of God. You're a child of God. You're a woman of God. You're a son of the most high God. You are more than a conqueror. Greater is he that lives inside of you than he that's in the world. There's nothing too difficult. There's nothing too hard that you can't accomplish with God. That story. Y'all remember Jabez? Listen to me. Jabez's mom was a bitter woman. She gave birth to this young boy named Jabez. She named him Jabez because the meaning of this name in her time meant pain, trouble, sorrow. Without even knowing our families, our parents, their parents, and we can't blame them. But they've experienced some turmoil. And out of their experience, moms, dads, grandparents have now passed on something. And when he was born, he was called pain. Now imagine every day. Jabez walking down the street and all the kids probably bullied him and says, there comes pain, there comes pain, there comes trouble, there comes trouble, there comes sorrow. Out of the bitterness of the mom, she labeled him. There's forgiveness for that. She did the best she could. But there came a day where Jabez was so sick and tired. Listen to me, dads. There came a point in his life where he was tired of being known for pain. He was tired of being known for trouble. And he starts making a bold prayer. He really starts believing God with all his faith. And look what he prays. Put my scripture up, please, guys. Come on, quickly. Jabez cried out to God of Israel. Stand to your feet. Come on, stand to your feet. Let's get out of here. Jabez cried out to God of Israel. And look what he prayed. Look what he, look what he cried out. He said, oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me, God, and keep me from harm so that I can be free from pain. And God did what? Granted his request. God is just waiting for you and I to show up and to come in faith and say, God, I am tired of being this this type of man. I'm tired of being this type of father. I'm tired of being this type of son. I'm tired of being this type of woman, this type of daughter. God, oh, that you would enlarge my territory, that you would expand me already, God, that you would do something beyond my wildest dreams, oh, God. And he says, let your hand be with me. 
If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below and we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.